How you doing guys? Today we're gonna to talk about how to grow your own mushrooms. For the past two years I've been growing mushrooms indoor and outdoor and I managed to get up to 15 kilos of mushrooms just in the last year from my small urban garden here in London, 8 by 5 meters, and all I had to do was to spur a couple of raised beds to grow plants along mushrooms and luckily uh, I met with an expert whose name is Elliot and he helped me to understand different methods on how to grow mushrooms and today we are breaking down five methods on how you can grow your own. What's up guys, it's Elliot from Urban Farm It here and today I've been invited to East London by Alessandro and we're going to teach him how he can incorporate mushrooms in his urban garden. So the first method that we're going to talk about today is growing shiitake mushrooms on logs. So what I've got here is a metre long length of sweet chestnut. Generally, if you're talking about shiitake mushrooms or oyster mushrooms, any of the hardwood logs, oak, hornbeam, ash, anything like that is spot on. When you're selecting your hardwood log, it's really, really important that you choose something that's disease free and doesn't have any other mushroom mycelium living in it already. So the perfect log is one that was cut between two and six weeks ago. This is the sweet spot because before two weeks, the antifungal properties of the log are still active, but post six weeks, there may, there may be too low moisture content in the log. Today we're going to be using shiitake mushroom plugs and these are literally small wooden dowels on which the shiitake mushroom mycelium is living. So we've chosen our log, we've chosen our dowels, now we're actually going to do the inoculation. As I mentioned before, on a one metre length we probably want to use about 50 dowels. It's a very very simple process, we're going to drill into the log using an 8mm drill bit and we want to go in at least as far as the dowel so in this case it will be 3 to 4 inches. It's really important that the dowel fits in at least flush or below the level of the bark otherwise the wax won't seal properly and this will increase your risk of contamination and water loss. we're going to try and create a diamond pattern. Starting from the outside edge, we're going to drill our first inoculation point six inches in and then continue along the whole length of the log. We're then going to rotate it and in between the other inoculation points, but three to four inches around, we're going to do another line. And in time, this will create our perfect diamond shape and even distribution. So our inoculation is almost complete. As a final job, I like to go around and patch any damage in the bark and also seal up the ends with our log. In exactly the same way when we're putting it over our inoculation points this will help to hold in moisture and help to keep out contaminants and therefore increase the likelihood that our mushroom will fully colonise. That's it, inoculation complete. Now what we've done is put the log in a quiet corner of the garden it's ideal really because it makes use of spaces where you otherwise wouldn't be able to grow your vegetable. We're going to try and treat this log a little bit like a shade loving plant and it'll stay somewhere shady and wind free. If needs be on a hot day, give it a little bit of watering, but other than that it requires no more maintenance. After maybe six months to a year, depending on how warm the season is, your log will be fully colonised, at which point it's time to shock it. With shiitake mushrooms, to carry out a shock, we're going to soak it for 24 hours in some fresh water and then bang it really hard with a mallet. This is amazing, it's an amazing adaptation of shiitake mushrooms in that they can sense when another tree has fallen in the forest because that then is the perfect time to fruit and release your spores. By providing this shock, you're imitating that process. Our next chosen method is to do an oyster mushroom bed grow. What we're going to use is the Mighty Winter Oyster, it's got the code 2191 on our website this is a really hardy mushroom that can produce all winter long and right through into the spring and the following autumn. 
It's a brilliant one because you can expect to harvest maybe five or six times in a year and it will be fruiting in any temperatures from 8 to 20 degrees. All a really brilliant all-rounder. With the shiitake mushrooms, it's the waiting man's game. You could be talking six months or a year before you see any fruit whatsoever. But with this method, you could be expecting harvest in as little as three weeks in the correct conditions. Typically, if it's chillier, it may take six or seven weeks. But as far as a quick turnaround goes, it's better than waiting all summer long for a tomato. Alessandro has very kindly given us pride of place in, a, in his, one of his main beds to devote to this method of growing, which is really fantastic. This is an area of probably about one and a half to two meters squared. So we'll end up using around about half of this bag. When we're doing a bespoke mushroom growing bed, I like to use a mixture of grades of material. So we've got chopped straw, which is fantastic because it will break down quickly and give the mushrooms that instant bit of nutrients. But we've also got some um, freshly chipped hardwood here, which will take a much longer time to, to break down and give the bed longevity. You can almost think of mushroom beds like a perennial crop in that if you keep on feeding it year after year, you'll get growth and harvests. As a base layer, we've put down some pre-soaked cardboard. This is important because it acts as a weed barrier and on drier days will help to sort of hold some inherent moisture and might get you through the, through the, uh, the hottest parts of the year. Following that, we're then going to layer our material and spawn almost like a lasagna for the Italians amongst you. And we're just going to build it up and go deeper and deeper until we're at least six inches deep. There's no fixed order that you need to go by, but today I'm just going to start with straw, then a layer of wood chips, then a layer of spawn and keep going all the way to the top. Your worst enemy when growing mushrooms is dryness. So as we put down each layer, we're going to periodically soak it as well. When you carry out your inoculation, you want it to be nice and evenly spread so that your mycelium runs through the material as quickly as possible and it will dominate any potential competing organisms. So what I'm going to do is just come in here and as though you're sowing a, a, a field with seed, evenly spread our mycelium throughout the whole layer. Generally, a five litre bag like this is capable of sowing a four metre squared area. But it's one of those where the more and the heavier you sow, the faster your results and the less chance of contamination. So often I like to double that up. So a bed grower is a great way of growing oyster mushrooms. However, not everybody in an urban environment has the luxury of a spare bread like Ali. So our next method is a fantastic one if you want to get the best of both worlds, growing vegetables and growing mushrooms together. Traditionally, it's a difficult thing to grow side by side uh, plants as they all require the same inputs, light and nutrients. However, by including mushrooms in your mulch, you can effectively double your growing space. My preferred sp species of mushroom for that is wine caps. It's code 501 on our website. It's a super hardy uh, species of mushroom that can deal with exposure and also has lots of symbiotic properties with plants. By mixing mushrooms with your plants, you speed up the breakdown of materials such as mulches um, and wood chips and nutrients become available far more quickly. On top of that, even better, is it's fantastic forage for bees. So if you live in an urban environment, you can increase your pollination rate by incorporating mushrooms and mushroom mycelium. Incorporating mushrooms in a mulch follows exactly the same principles as when we're growing in a bed. We're gonna put down a material that contains lignin, such as straw or wood chip, and we're gonna keep it moist and add in our mycelium. It is literally that simple. One of our main focuses and trials as urban farmers is space efficiency. We've already seen that by incorporating mushrooms in our mulch, we can double up our growing space if you're talking about beds, but we can take it to another level and optimize literally every nook and cranny in our gardens. For example, we have a lovely peach tree here and in the same way as in a orchard, you would mulch around the base of, of, a, of a grown tree, we're gonna do the same here. This is great because it gives you extra production in the form of mushrooms, but it will also help to shield the young plant's roots during frost. I get asked all the time, what do I do with my finished kit? This kit's been harvested four or five times now, so it's coming towards the end of its life. 
A lot of guys will recommend that you just throw it on the compost heap. However, oyster mushrooms are primary decomposers. That meaning that they like to have a fresh material in which to grow. So by taking this old kit and mixing it with fresh material, it will kickstart the process again and you'll be able to harvest another three, four or even five flushes from that. So that's it, five methods to grow mushrooms in an urban garden in a space efficient way. But remember, we've used several different species here and don't feel like one method is only suitable for one species. You could grow oyster mushrooms in buckets or beds or mulch and the same with wine cap as well. So get out there, try different types, try different methods and learn how to grow in your space.